Mike here. Ah, it is a strange machine. Uh, a little while ago I was talking about the uh, air-cooled condenser. Um, I said I did lose one of these uh, uh, thermocouples I showed you earlier there. It was installed here and once I, uh, once I make another one, repair it, it's going to be actually be installed right here. Uh, get it away from the compressor a little bit. Um, I overheated it and ruined it. So this would be probably just a good place to install it. So it's going to actually be mounted up there. Um, something else that I did here recently, um, talked a little bit about this, this pneumatic expansion valve. I have a little air tank, a little regulator, just uh, maintaining air pressure on the uh, uh, power head of that TXV. I call it a PXV now. Um, just kind of gives me some manual control uh, because the evaporator that I'm dealing with is not a dry type. It's a rather unusual gravity flooded evaporator. This is the uh, Ebulator. And this is a plastic sight glass. That is a piece of uh, half inch outside diameter high density polyethylene tubing purchased at uh, Home Depot. Um, I uh, used compression fittings and then I made this, uh, this clamp structure here. Uh, kind of reminds me of something you'd see on a boiler sight glass. Um, I always pictured them as, as being there to protect it so you didn't bust the glass, but you know, in this case, and maybe in that case too, I have it there just to protect it from blowing out, you know. And I also put valves, these are gas valves on the top and bottom, so that when I shut the machine down and it goes to equalize, uh, you know, this 50 pounds per square inch or so will turn into 250, 200 pounds per square inch, and that's it's unnecessary for me to put that, that, uh, that pressure to this fit, these fittings into this tubing, especially so suddenly. So um, I've set it up so that I can shut those off, shut the machine down, and walk away from it and not have to be too concerned that this thing's gonna pop while I'm away from it. Um, I do think it's curious here, you know, I, I, I was trying to install this as a sight glass and I've become more and more aware that um, the, the, the notion of liquid level inside of a, a, a gravity flooded evaporator is, um, it's false. It's not even worth talking about. Um, how do you determine how much liquid is in there, how much needs to be in there? It's a tricky question. Because um, uh, what's happening what's happening with uh, you know, the liquid level in there is obviously you can see all this, this uh, foaming and bubbling and surging as uh, bubbles carry liquid upwards. Um, now I could probably maybe eliminate some of those bubbles if I, you know, maybe insulated some of these lines, which I did with the last sight glass. But um, uh, right now I'm just, I'm just playing around, and I, I think it's curious to see how much activity there really is there. Now, I've, I've noticed that I can close down these valves. I don't like to mess with them too much while it's running. Actually, it's pretty cold right now, so afraid I'm going to have a bad bad seal if I start messing with them while they're cold and the metal's, you know, varying in, uh, in specifications. See, right there. Keep messing with it a little bit. I do the same with the top one. But there's a certain point where you close it down where it, it uh, there you go. It's quieted down a little bit. But again, it's not really clear as to what, you know, what the actual liquid level in here is. I think it's actually a better indication of, you know, what's going on inside of these coils here. It's not that the liquid is maintained to this height, and then when the machine's running, it's all bubbling and, and foaming over. You know, if the machine was shut down, maybe there's only this much liquid in it, or this much, or this much, you know. Um, and it's that, that activity that, um, that, that activity that it carries it all the way up through those pipes. And that was the intention with these pipes, is that they, uh, once the once the compressor pulls the suction side down at low enough pressure, uh, that violent ebullition, that boiling, would carry the liquid up and over and into the central column, circulate it through the central column and then through each coil. Um, so what I'm going to learn from this, I don't know yet, but I do like it. And it uh, cost a couple bucks in hardware to put it together, but I'm pretty pleased with it. I was getting tired of this old sight glass here. This thing actually fell apart. I, uh, in fact, I was describing it in the last video. 
I disassembled it and put everything back together the way it was supposed to be. But uh, it's just not a good application for this. So I'm pretty hungry, so I'm probably going to go get something to eat. But uh, I just thought I'd demonstrate this thing a little bit because I think it turned out all right. Uh, I am wearing safety glasses, and uh, I think I'm going to stop by Tap Plastics or something this week and get some plexiglass and kind of make a shield just in case this thing were to pop on me. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to get all that directly. So I'm not saying this thing is 100% safe, and it, it's it's not, but I'm taking the risk. Okay.